Uh, my book, Edge of Chaos, offers 10 proposals to improve democracy. Um, roughly six of them are targeting the politician, four of them are targeting the voter. Um, it is critically important that people appreciate, um, as we go through these very challenging uh, proposals, that all the proposals, all 10 of them, have precedent somewhere in the world. So to put it more simply, um, every proposal that I offer in the book for consideration, not for wholesale consumption, but for us to consider as we think about our unique democratic circumstances in whatever country we may be, um, all of these proposals have uh, do exist already somewhere around the world. Um, for instance, I offer the idea of mandatory voting. There are about 27 countries today that have mandatory voting, including Australia, um, Belgium, Greece, and many countries in South America. The idea is very simple. Um, it's essentially an endowed civic duty of every citizen to participate in the electoral process, and it's critically important that people do participate. And so what they do in Australia is that they fine you, uh, and actually in many countries, I should say, for where the mandatory voting is the case, you either get a monetary fine or you could be blocked from public services, such as you may not be able to get a job in the government um, if you do not vote and if you do not have proof that you vote. Um, of course, there are many other things we can think about to try and enhance voter participation rates, uh, especially to the extent that people are not voting because they're too poor to leave, uh, say, um, an hourly wage job to go and stand in line. Um, it could be the case that we might see more uh, you know, people vote on a weekend instead of on a Tuesday in November. Um, we might actually subsidize some of those uh, w you know, workers on the day of the election so that they don't feel like they're losing income. So some of these initiatives are um, already underway in, in other places across Europe, as an example. Uh, I do think that we should think about trying to enhance um, the participation of uh, voters. I mean, frankly, uh, this idea of mandatory voting does fly in the face of the First Amendment in the United States, which is the right to choose. Um, but I do think that, uh, you know, this is actually harming us, um, especially if we, uh, at stealth, are essentially moving to an environment where fewer and fewer people vote and essentially then dictate, um, if albeit implicitly, dictate public policy. So I, I do think we should be open to questions around mandatory voting, but nevertheless, it's, it is worth saying that uh, I think that that might be a hard pill to swallow for Americans who do believe in the First Amendment. Um, one of the other proposals for voters is this idea of weighted voting. Um, and it has already been misunderstood. My book has been reviewed a number of times, and it's quite a pity that uh, people are misconstruing and misunderstanding what it's about. Um, it is about um, allocating greater or less weight to people based on their engagement. This is not about ascribing uh, uh, higher weight to people based on any adjective such as race or gender or land ownership or IQ or education. It has absolutely nothing to do with that, just to be absolutely clear. Um, but uh, there, there are, of course, contextual issues because we would not want to return to an era of where certain groups are essentially disadvantaged or banished from voting because of their backgrounds or race or education. Um, I, I have to say, as an immigrant, um, uh, as somebody who's immigrated to Europe, but also to the United States, I am required to take a civics test. Every immigrant, regardless of background, economics, uh, 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 standing, or uh, education background, is required um, to take a basic test to show that engagement. And all I'm essentially proposing in the book is that we might want to consider that kind of, of thinking just so that we can imbue a sense of commitment from the average citizen. Um, of course, there are places, um, in fact, Canada and uh, Switzerland are looking at weighted voting. Um, you could see the idea of weighted voting perhaps getting much more aggressive uh, if you think about a referendum. Uh, in referenda, it's usually a very specific question that is on the ballot. Um, and so, for example, you could argue, um, and some people have argued, that for a health care question, um, you know, frankly, I don't know whether the marginal dollar or the additional dollar that we spend in health care should go for x-rays or for beds or for nurse, nurses' pay. I simply don't know. But maybe the people who work in that area might have better understanding, a better understanding of what the best use of that additional dollar might be. And so this idea that their vote should count more um, is something that is definitely flirted around 
um, similarly with, with education as well. Um, but this is very much uh, around referenda. It's not about general elections. And again, I think there's a bit of a, a schism um, in thinking there. I, I will just point out that we already do have weighted voting in the United States. Um, if you are incarcerated, you have a zero vote. Um, that's about two million Americans, um, but also, and, and ex that's uh, two million Americans who are in prison today, but that excludes people who are, are released and not allowed to vote. But also, in the Democratic Party, superdelegates have a weight that weighs more than the average delegate. So um, whether people are aware or not, we do have these, uh, these uh, sort of themes of, uh, of weighted voting already. Um, but hopefully, uh, we, that ultimately, what we want, uh, what I think was the ultimate win for a democratic process is to ensure we have as many people as possible voting, but we want to make sure that people are also very understanding um, or uh, certainly uh, engaged um, as possible. And I believe that having these types of proposals in place will address um, these particular goals in, in a very specific way. It, it may be worth just adding one last point, which is that ultimately if we had mandatory civics classes um, or courses, so let's say at high school or even junior high, I think that would also really help because there are many studies that now show um, upwards of a third of American adults don't even know the three key pillars of, uh, of the democratic process, the executive, the legislature, uh, as well as the uh, judiciary. And to me, I think that ultimately we have an, uh, it's our duty and onus to ensure that we have better participation of uh, engage and, and uh, engagement of citizens. And part of that process is ensuring that they understand what voter rights are, how the process works, and how to vote, um, as well as uh, participate in, in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm.